Which do you think people more easily forget? That Dwayne Wade played on the Cavs? Or that Chad Michael Murray was an episode to the Gilmore Girls? But today I'm just going to uh, chronicle Saturday because uh, about a month and a half ago, link at the top of the screen if you missed it, I chronicled a Friday in Vegas. Just a Poker Players Friday in Vegas and uh, a lot of people seem to enjoy it. So I thought I would do every single day of the week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, etc. Finish with a Thursday at some point, months down the road. Today is Saturday, special edition Saturday. Uh, March Madness, first weekend March Madness, third day, so gonna bounce casinos, see what Herbs and Rye is doing in the World Series of Poker circuit area in a minute, but first, gotta get some uh, voucher Gatorade. Alright, I'm gonna see what, uh, I don't even know what it looks like upstairs yet. I actually went upstairs to where the ballrooms are, between the poker room and the Jubilee elevator bank, to check out the layout the day before the circuit started with the famous Bill Tate, and it wasn't set up yet. They were still using the Normandy ballroom for whatever show goes on up there, some paranormal scam show or something. So uh, I'm going to see what it looks like as soon as you see what it looks like. Yeah, things are set up now. Two events going, the uh, 25 people left in the horse event. That's what Herbs and Rye is playing. And uh, just starting right now, 342 people right now, probably revise in a no limit event. And whenever the horse event ends, Herbs and Rye is gonna lay register into that. All right, back downstairs. Herbs and Rye is, uh, I think he said he doubled early. He didn't have a ton of chips to start day two, but he said he doubled early, and there's 25 people left, so uh, they're in the money. I think 37 cashed, so if he tells me he makes it to the final table, he'll probably come back and maybe a rail a little bit of it. I'm gonna head across the street, probably Caesars, and if it's boring, Bellagio, and then if that's boring, hopefully it is late enough that I feel a game is going on at Sahara, and I'll take the monorail to Sahara. If you wonder why I called the paranormal show a scam, I don't have a problem with the term illusionist, because illusions are things. I do have a problem with the word magician, because magic is not a thing. And there's also no way that guy is actually reading people's minds. That's not what's going on. So, I have a problem with that term. Although, I did go up there at 5.30 on Wednesday the 20th, and people were lined up and going into that ballroom. And the first event was Thursday, so they very quickly, Wednesday night, changed that room from whatever the seating is like for that show into the, uh, I don't know, about 100 tables set up, not all of them in use, but it looked like about that many were set up. And uh, yeah, uh, other people in the 25, the only person you've probably heard of, Norman Chad, he's in uh, the final 25 of that horse tournament. Two other people I see around town, don't know their names. And uh, that's about it. I'm gonna walk across the street, probably no filming outside, because it is incredibly windy. I don't think you'll be able to hear anything, but when I walk into Caesars, you'll know. got to Caesars, finally got to the poker playing portion of the day, and I'm going to play while I'm right next to a packed sports book during March Madness. You would see Michigan State playing right now. Alright, pretty good timing. Uh, time at the bottom of the screen. I don't know what it is, but uh, like 4.45 or something. Herbs and Rye told me he uh, got to the final table of the horse event, so I'm gonna go over there and see how it finishes. He texted me when the maniac at our table uh, just got crippled and had $50 left, and of course lost it the very next hand. So, uh, I was on a terrible table, I transferred to a better one, but now that the maniac's gone, that table is just about as bad as the first one, so no problem leaving now. Uh, I did win an all-in against that guy, so that was good. And I don't know, after uh, the tournament finishes, Maybe monorail to MGM for a few hours, then monorail to Sahara for a few hours, then gotta get the monorail back to the heart of the strip by uh, before three, that's when the monorail closes. But we'll see. All right, tournament's going on right behind me, right there. Uh, nine left. 
1557 guaranteed for ninth, 18,000 and change up top. He doesn't have a lot of chips. Oh, there was just a three-way all-in. Nine seed busted, so there's eight people left. Herbs and Roy was involved. So him and the four seed split the pot. So eight left now. Herbs and Roy added a few chips to a stack. That hand, 2,400. 1,948 uh, guaranteed for eighth place. And shout outs to uh, seat one, who just told me he's been watching the videos for the past couple weeks. And on the escalator up here, shout out to uh, the dealer, who said he's been watching the videos also. Uh, glad you guys are enjoying the content. All right, H&R went out uh, seven, $2,489 payout. I think it was a $400 buy-in. Uh, did get one double up while he was seven-handed, but not much else. His final hand was seven card stud, high only. Started with four clubs, never improved, wound up, wound up with King High, which wasn't good, and that was it. He's uh, late registering for the uh, No Limit event going on right now, and I'm gonna get a voucher drink or two, possibly have a cigar. It's very windy outside, I don't know, smoking in the wind. And, uh, what, it's like 625 or something? Could be a game going on at Sahara. Might just go down there, find out. If I have to wait for like 45 minutes, then I'll do that. All right, time at the bottom. I think it's like 6.45 or something. Heading down to Sahara, my name's on the list. Bravo and phone calls can be very deceptive uh, in order to find out how many games are going on in Sahara. One of the things I love about Sahara, <laughs> you could call and uh, the answer you get might be, uh, might be, uh, I don't know. So uh, just gotta go down and see if they have a game. If they don't, I'll probably just film another video there while I'm waiting, watch whatever game is going on. What game is going on? I don't know. NC State just beat Oakland in overtime. There's there there's a game going on right now. I don't know which one. And uh, yeah, not a ton of hours. Spent a little more time than I thought I would uh, railing herbs and rye. So I think I only have like an hour 45 so far. But I will go to Sahara and I will play. All right, it's like 1 a.m. That was such an eventful night in the Sahara Poker Room. It was amazing. A shame I couldn't film any of it, and you weren't there to experience it yourself. But when I'm not near music, messing up copyright things, I will tell you all about it. There were two cash tables a lot of the night. I started the second one, and uh, the tournament got 20 entries. The $100 nightly bounty tournament got 20 entries. So, started on two tables, it got down to the final table and when there's one table left, security shows up. I was pretty close, like I was in the, uh, uh, I was on the aisle, so I was in the eight seat of my table, pretty close to the two seat of the table across the aisle. And security shows up and they ask the two seat for his ID and he says, what's this about? And security says, you know what this is about, and takes his ID. I don't know if the guy knew what it was about or not. Uh, there's a guy in the tournament who's left the table and he's like standing like near the podium. Like, it looks like he's scared to go back. Eventually they tell the guy whose ID they took, I mean they return it eventually, they tell him he needs to leave. He's out of the tournament. His chips are still there. I think they blinded him off. I don't know what they did with the bounty chip. And he's gone. Then the other guy who, it sounded like, it was tough to hear. The music is so loud in there. Not like Planet Hollywood back in the day, but it's loud. And even though they were close to me, I couldn't really make out what they were saying. It sounded like someone was accusing him of verbal abuse. And and that's all I could make out. So anyway, that happened. Then two guys on the other cash table started like trash talking each other also. The floor was called. I walked over because I love a controversy and couldn't really hear that much of it either. I don't know, they were just like, I don't know. I didn't hear the word name calling. Just like talking back and forth to the point where the floor had to be called over by the dealer. Uh, what the dealer, the dealer's, uh, the floor's idea was a pretty good one. And remember, rice is a spoon food.